Right, today's video is going to be on a few things I've learned recently about slip application for drippy slippy pieces. So I've been doing them for a few years, but always doing them the same way. And the designs I've done recently, the firstly the magma, then the rainbow, and now Northern Lights, have really made me think about how I apply it. So I've kind of gone back to the drawing board a bit and um, started thinking more about that. And I wanted to do a quick video, well, not that quick actually, but a video showing what I've learned. So to start with, you'll need slip. I've got a video showing how I make it, but it's just dried um, trimmings. So I collect my clay when, um, should have done that. Uh, yeah, get all the scraps in a bucket, add water to them, and then I've got a slip. I don't add anything fancy to it, but I do colour it. So I've got black and white slip to show you the marbling effect. I just use these cheap syringes. Um, the It doesn't really matter. You can get a lot of them on Amazon, and it doesn't matter the specifics. But there are two kinds that I've seen. These screw heads that take attachments and then the ones that are offset and um, just have a push fit for attachments. So when I say attachments, I mean things like these narrower heads will fit on. With some of them they screw in, with some of them, in fact, does that one actually screw in? Yeah, so they seem to be fairly standard. If you're gonna use them, screw attachments are nice, um, but in theory, you shouldn't be applying so much pressure that the friction fit ones don't work. And the reason I prefer these ones is because the offset head makes it easier to get rid of air bubbles and the um, there's less cleaning because these ones have uh, an outer bit with a screw thread and an inner bit, so to get the slip out, that's a pain. So I'd recommend these ones. Uh, they're cheap, they wear out, you'll probably have to replace them fairly often if you do something like this because the slip seems to um, kind of scratch the surface. So what I do is I throw my pieces the day before, I leave them on the bats so they can re-return to the wheel. This is a Hartley and Noble Russian doll bat system. Um, the advantage of doing it this way is that they're still centered, firmly attached, and what I can do, I'll show you the process quickly. I'll do a, I think I have a full video on these, but if I don't, I'll redo it and it's definitely a blog post. Um, but you can trim while they're attached. So you can take off the wall. The advantage to this is you can feel how thick the wall is as you go, because you've got access to both sides. So I essentially do the majority of my trimming before adding the slip which is necessary because you then can't trim the walls once you've added it. Um, so that would be basically my process and I get a fairly sharp rounded rim to my pieces because I think it's a nicer drinking experience. So I just trim those and then burnish them with a bit of plastic. This is the bag that the clay comes in. So that's how I would prepare my pieces and then I have uh, a few of them, and I'm going to demonstrate a few different ways you can apply the slip. So, the, to start with, kind of the most basic way of doing it would be to have, and all of these are going to just have black and white slip. Obviously, you can do a, a whole range of colours. Um, I generally colour those with mason stains because the oxides don't tend to give that nice a colour. So, one colour in each. You want to avoid air bubbles at all costs, which is where the uh, the fabric, the, the nozzle on these is at the top, makes it a bit easier to get rid of it. So what you'll have to do is once you've filled them up, just tap them on something for a while to get all the air to come up, because the slip's quite thick, it's not gonna bubble up readily. But it will after a little while, and then just take the top off, and that should get rid of the air bubbles. Um, it's very hard to avoid them altogether, but worth taking just a little bit of extra time to try and avoid it. 
So first application, I'm just going to alternate bands of them, which would work exactly as you expect. Um, and what I will also do is I'll show you straight bands versus um, variation in thickness, because what I would normally do is vary the thickness. So you add a band of slip like that. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but there were a few air bubbles in there, which isn't ideal. You can sort of deal with them, but um, best to avoid if possible. So I'm going to mark out where all the bands are going to go. I'll do six alternating. So those are fairly even in thickness. Obviously, there's a, a bit of variation from where you start and end, um, but you can exaggerate it. So we'll leave the top band as it is, this one I'll do a bit, so just by pulsing the application you can see there's a, a variation in thickness, and then this one I'll do more, and then repeat with the black, so band, the band with a bit of variation, with a lot of variation. So then this is where having it attached really helps because if you're trying to do this and it's not attached to something it'll bounce up each time. So um, again well worth leaving them on the back if possible. So that is take one and you can see how the top bands tend to slide down because there's a slight variation in thickness, there's a slight grouping, um, but they slide down fairly uniformly. So if you'd have done that the whole way down, you'd have even bands. These ones have bigger pulses, so they're coming out as um, just single big waves. That's how I tended to do it for the, um, the normal drippy slippy ones, which are blues and the white clays off-white, so it sort of looks like the ocean, and waves crashing on the shore, and then these ones have more frequent waves, so you can see they're wobbling, but um, you get more variation. But as a result, the kind of, the frequency is greater, but the, the variation um, is a bit reduced because you're adding more sort of, but that is, kind of the most basic way of doing it. Then, and you can see there, if you get an air bubble, sometimes, in fact, if you get an air bubble like that, and you catch it in time, you can just patch it up. You have to take the tip off it, but that's better than a hole because the reason the air bubbles are so bad is because the glaze will generally not fill them or will it highlight them if it does. So they're always obvious, where if you can fill them and smooth them out, which you can do more easily when it's one colour, um, you can actually repair them effectively. Uh, yeah, best to avoid them wherever possible. So, take one, you've got two syringes, one colour in each, and you alternate the bands. Next way of doing it, I'm going to do two colours, but I'm going to marble them on the piece. And all these other pieces have had the, the trimming and the burnishing already done. So what I would do with this is add some slip. first colour and then add some slip up the second colour. And this is a kind of 
This is the sort of thing I'm now doing for the Northern Lights one pieces, um, which I'm still working on exactly how they're going to come out, but you do almost entirely black and then just a flash of a colour. And then as you can see, where you get that sort of gradient between the two, obviously for Northern Lights that's, a, that's exactly how you want it to look, because that's how the Northern Lights do look, so you get a flash of colour and then that soft gradient. I mean, whether or not you like that design of piece, um, yeah, up to you. I'm not so keen on this one. It's hard to get it really marbled, which I think if you're going to marble it, that's what I would go for. But obviously, as said, with a specific application like the Northern Lights one, this way gives you far more control um, and should let you create a specific effect. So useful in that regard. The next one is how I normally do it. So this will be with two colours in the same syringe. Um, and I will use this syringe. So we've got um, white in it already. Just clean it off on a sponge between because you don't want to contaminate the two. Now, you can't see it because it's just the white on the outside, but it's now half white, half black. Uh, and then what I think I'll do is the same again, so more white. One thing I've learned from the rainbow pieces is that you, for a medium to large piece, are going to hold around 350 to 450 mil when it's fired, you want about 30 mil of slip possibly even just a bit less than that, but that's a nice amount to have. Um, useful to know, especially if you're trying to do an application where you use everything. Actually, I'll come to one of those. I'm going to show you how I'm doing some rainbow application. But, um, when you've got marbled slip in the syringe and you're trying to get rid of air bubbles, I just catch the first little bit on the sponge because that will contain the air bubbles because they move up to the top corner. So, marbled slip. Um, this is how so I'll do this application as a marbled in one syringe um, done fast, I think. But you can do it fast and slow, and they will give different patterns. And so, this is what I'm kind of doing with the magma. So what I would do with this is you apply your bands and you have to kind of pay a bit of attention to how the colours are marbled in the syringe because the more colours you've got the more likely there are pockets of it and sometimes you can apply like this. I've used half of what was in the syringe or thereabouts um, and actually that could quite easily, is that even in focus? Not really, how's that happened? No, it's not too bad. It'd be annoying if that's all been out of focus. Yeah, so you use half, but you can end up with that missing one colour entirely. Um, anyway, so what I'd do is I'd add some, and then the reason you want the, the greater speed is that that gives you more horizontal bands. So you can exacerbate that by doing one final pass up with each one, which gives you a surface layer of more exaggerated bands. which should mean you get more kind of layers, like strata to it. And actually that's not as exaggerated as I was hoping, but I think it will be when it's fired. But you get all the horizontal banding to it.
next one I will do the same thing but slower. So I'll need to top that syringe bit up. And then what you get when you do the same thing slower is rather than really exaggerated strata to the horizontal band, you get more variation as you go round the piece. when you've got a lot of colours on there. But this should come out more like the, um, the second piece where it's marbled but it's not that exaggerated. I think that's enough. So. So you get, this isn't the best example of it, but um, you'd get more, if there was more variation in the slip, you'd get more variation around rather than in the horizontal bands. With all of these techniques, it's very random. So how the piece ends up looking is there's a, a large element of chance to it. Right, I'm going to abandon that syringe because the next one is how I'm doing the rainbow slip. So what I want to do is I'm just going to do half and half. So 15 ml of light. 15 dark. You can also trap air bubbles if you're not careful in the application, and unfortunately, that's also quite hard to avoid. Um, but what you want to avoid as much as possible is having two bands of slip meet because they'll trap air underneath them. So if you just do a continuous band each time seems to avoid the worst of it. Right, so this is one continuous helix from top to bottom, so you just, rather than doing discrete bands, you just start at the top and work your way down, which is where having, knowing how much slip you need is a, a good thing, because especially when you're doing the rainbow one, you've marbled all the colours in, if you run out halfway down or you've got twice as much as you need, it's not going to work. So to get all the colours distributed in one continuous thing, you need to know how much you need, um, and that will be about this much. So, it's actually less of a constant gradient you sometimes get but you can kind of see how it's more black mixture more white which is what you'd expect obviously first in first last out so whichever color you put in first is at the bottom of the syringe and it's the last one out so there you've just got you've got more bands because of how many essentially layers you've got as you turn as you go down the piece um, works better with more colours obviously because then you get a gradient that's more obvious this one hasn't exactly as well. not necessarily the best demonstrations of it but should give you the idea um, this is one I haven't done for a while but I'm going to do another marble in the same syringe mix and this is done without the wheel turning. Okay, this 
So what I'd do with this one is just do a blob. And then I'm not sure if this will, I don't think it makes any difference how you go about doing it. What I might start doing, and oh no, that's gonna to be too much hassle. So if you have two colors, you can alternate. I was hoping the gradient in these will end up working quite well, but we'll see. It's, I think the gradient's going to work quite nicely around the piece, but I don't know how it's going to look when they join back up, because it seemed to start more or less solid black, so it's going to be quite obvious. And I also don't know if I'm adding enough here. Almost certainly not. Right, so there we've got. This is where you don't want your slip to be too thick because those spikes will remain as spikes, but hopefully, this is about right. Might go. Uh, no, I'll do it like this, see what happens. We can learn together. So, they've joined together. That's the sort of gradient that I was expecting. So you've got the marbling in each one. Um, might be better to do, I don't know how you'd avoid them joining up, other than having them further apart. It might be a technique that needs to be played with more, but yeah, it is what it is. If you wanted something that looked like that, then there you go. And then the last one is something people have asked about periodically because it combines two things. What happens if you put slip on a swirly? And I haven't done this for so long but I really don't know. The last time I tried it didn't really work. So I think it would be better to do either lots of slip at the top and have it run down over it or more likely put the slip on the high point and I am going to try putting the slip only on the high point because I think that will probably work better. I don't know, it's very hard to say. You have to add quite a lot. Oh, interestingly, obviously, um, do with the wheel turning the other direction, which I can. Hmm. Interesting how, I guess because the motor's kind of bedded in in one direction, this is a weird noise. Right, let's go for it. So I'm looking for the point. Hard to see where it comes off. Well, I don't like it, but then as a general rule, I kind of think most of the time 
combining two designs just makes them messy. So I don't like, I've tried before, adding peacock to swirly or drippy slip to peacock or anything like that. And I tend to think it makes them messy and they work worse. You've got t twice as many processes to make something that looks half as good. So I don't like it, but again, if that's what you wanted, maybe I'll feel differently about it when it's fired. Um, but the, the technique sort of works, it does flow over it. So yeah, that um, hopefully will be a, a few things to think about if you wanted to play with the technique. Um, it's infinitely variable because obviously you can have as many colours of slip as you want and you can apply them in a bunch of different ways. This is just the handful that I thought of or that I've been playing with recently. But I don't think I even did a particularly good demonstration of the, what I was talking about on the third one where you come back over the top. If you get that right, you get um, this sort of strata to it. And you can, when it's when you're applying the slip, especially if they're colours that are quite obviously different as as pre-fired colours. Um, so some, especially if you colour with cobalt, for example, you won't really be able to see the difference until it's fired. But some of them are very obvious as they come out. You can actually see how crisp the lines can be when they come out. Um, and I still haven't figured out exactly why it is. Sometimes that works perfectly and sometimes it doesn't. I think it's to do with how marbled they are in the syringe and then how you apply them. So it's sort of a balancing act between those and you need to, to see what's happening and adjust as you go. Um, but there's a lot of variables and there's a lot you could learn about it and I'm not really experimented with it that much. I've done a lot of one design of it but you could kind of keep going and finding new combinations and new techniques. Um, and I think this is just scratching the surface, so hopefully this gives you an idea for something you can try that's different and you can build on this and try something different again. Because, um, yeah, there's a lot of potential to it uh, and I look forward to seeing what everyone else comes up with.